If you love Chevys, then this is the place for you. This is the Menard Chevy Series, where we tour the country to find the finest race cars and rides that are part of the bowtie breed. This week we're outside of Denver, Colorado, standing in the beautiful Red Rocks formations. Why are we here? Well, Red Rocks is home to one of the most beautiful and incomparable music venues in the United States of America. As it turns out, just on the other side of that ridge, some more music's being made, and that is music of the mechanical variety. So sit back, relax, and enjoy for the next half hour because we're going to be showing you the great Chevrolets and the people that love them. We're going to kick things off with our first producer's pick. Well, in 1964, Chevrolet rolled out one of the most groundbreaking models of the 1960s. That was, of course, the Corvair. And we stumbled upon this 1965 model that's owned by Charles Kermis of Colorado, and it is spectacular. Charles, tell us a little bit about the history of this fantastic convertible. Uh, well, this is a daily driver in summer for me. I can notice the little bubbles in the paint. Uh, it was painted about 20 years ago. Uh, the car actually came from California in Santa Rosa. I have all the documentation, including the Protecto plate from, <laughs> from birth to uh, the various uh, owners. One of them was Omar Sharif, the actor. Uh, then it went over to the Napa Valley President's Car Collection and an engineer out in San Jose bought it. The guy knew nothing about the car. Uh, I saw an electric muffin fan running on 12 <laughs> volts inside for bringing air to defrost. They said, what is this? And uh, the car started up, it couldn't go in gear. There was a little piece of plastic in the uh, pulley assembly that was broken. We slipped the cable back on and instant car. This is an affordable car for anyone that wants to come in and enjoy a good ride, enjoy the, the beautiful mastership. I mean, we built an air-cooled engine that, that Nader killed, killed American industry, and Porsche stole. <laughs> and, and this has, you know, Corvette, Corvette suspension independent. Oh, what a beautiful car. Great for someone just to go in affordable in this hobby. I just got my wife a BMW, and I'm sorry, uh, this is just wonderful. I couldn't afford a Corvette, so I could afford a Corvair, and it's just wonderful. Now let's check out the original Parts Group Award winner. Well, it's a pretty bright day here at Bandemir Speedway, but there's one car in this car show that's actually outshining the sun itself, and that is the 1969 Chevelle of Craig Day, which is painted in a rare factory paint coat. Tell us about this car. Well, it's a 69 SS396 painted in a Daytona yellow, three and a quarter horse 396. It was originally a factory four-speed car, and 12 over in, yeah. You know, you're the winner of the OPGI Original Award this weekend, and the story of you bringing this car back to life is pretty awesome. Tell us how you found it and, and how you brought it back. Well, I, uh, um, one of my co-workers had one for sale, he said, so I went over and looked at it, and it was uh, alongside his garage, so it was pretty rough. Uh, it was an old drag car from the 70s, and it was completely stripped down. I mean, there was no, no bumper, no interior, no nothing. And so I spent the next, uh, the next few years uh, looking for parts in drunk yards and, and want ads where I can. And then uh, all the reproduction parts I got were from OPGI, and so that was a big help. After we got it uh, debuted in 2004, we just started adding some more stuff. So um, I went ahead and put 2010 Camaro buckets in, had them reupholstered in a 69 type pattern. And uh, they're full powered and full functional. Put the factory AC back in and converted it to 134A. So everything goes out good and cold. And that four wheel disc brakes all around. And it's been, a, been quite, quite a fun, fun drive, you know. As we all know, these car projects are never totally done. This car has the original 396 in it, but as I understand, not for long. No, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it out, and I have a 454 that I'm building for it. So this fall, we're going to pull it and put the 454 in and put the 396 back to its original stock. Well, Craig, congratulations on winning the OPGI Original Award. And well, Thank you very much. I'm, I'm really honored. So one of the most iconic body styles that Chevrolet ever rolled out was in the early 1960s, the bubble top style Impalas, and we are standing in front of a gorgeous example one right here, Ron Vigil, 502 Ramjet under the hood, paint, beautiful. Walk me through your history with this car and everything that's going on with it. I bought it and I just, it, it was kind of almost that color red, but I didn't like it, so I redid it. 
And then I changed it up and put it a two-tone on it, and everybody's like, why are you going to do that? It's like I wanted something different. You know, and I painted it and did it all myself. That's amazing because the body work on this thing, especially because those quarter panels are about six miles long down there, man, you got it straight as an arrow. How many hours you got into this paint job? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> I just kept going and going and going. Now, when you got hold of the car, did it already have the big block in it, or is that? No, I, I put all that big block 502 Ramjet. It's got a 700 R4 behind it. It's all airbagged, you know, four-wheel disc brakes. How often do you get out with it? Any, any chance I can, I take it out. And that's why people say, do you drive it? Yes, I drive it. Why have it if you can't drive it, right? Absolutely, and with all the torque the big 502 makes, I'm sure you've probably burned a couple sets of tires off the back of it. Not yet, but I plan to. <laughs> well, what's your favorite part of the car? The styling, the power, what do you really like about it? Just the overall car itself, you know. It's a heads turner, is what it is. This episode of the Menard Chevy Series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Hello and welcome back to the Chevrolet Series event here at Vandermeer Raceway. As you'd expect, there's no shortage of Chevrolet Novas at this show. As you can see behind me, we're going to look at another one of our favorites right now. Well, sometimes you walk up to a car and things are not always as they seem. This beautiful 1967 Nova that we're going to talk about has a pretty big hidden secret that's actually hiding in plain sight. So talk to me about that motor up front, man. 555 cubic inch big block F2 Pro Charger. That thing has to make some serious power. It's right at 1,000 horse. <laughs> and the car weighs what, 35, 3,600 pounds? 3,625 pounds. So 3,600 pound car, 1,000 horse motor, that is a lot of fun on the street. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and pump gas. Even better. Do you drive it often? You get out of the, you get it out of the shop very often? Every time I get a chance, I drive it. It is a driver. Tell us about the interior, too. It looks like it's set up for comfort as well. It's very comfortable. It's leather, um, bucket seats, two-seater. Do many people pick up on the fact that it's a fiberglass body? Nobody does. I have to tell them. And even then, they're probably surprised. They're very surprised, right? I just, the guy that has a coupe down here, he just came up and I told him it's fiberglass, and he goes, no, it isn't. I said, yes, it is. <laughs> But it's chopped like an inch and a quarter. Uh, it's channeled. That's why it's set so low. And tell me a little bit about the suspension that's underneath the car. Four link style of suspension in the back. How's it set up? Gutter Morrison chassis. It's a lot of fun. Gets a lot of attention. Time now for this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. Well, this weekend's Rock Auto Restored winner here in Bandemir is a pretty wild piece. 1966 Chevy 2 of Randy Watson. Has kind of elements of Pro Street, has elements of custom, and even has some Pro Touring elements in it. Randy, you've had this car for a long time, and this is kind of the latest version and evolution, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. Well, I bought the car in the early 80s, and I had another car at the time, and it sat on the street for about six years until uh, I got rid of the other car and started working on this one. It was uh, pretty much a basket case. The only thing good about it, it was a two-door hardtop. I was going to just uh, Put a 327 and a four speed, and but the front suspension was all rotted out, and the rear suspension was rotted out. And uh, I just kind of decided to put a full frame under it, and uh, things kind of took off from there. I think one of the first things people notice is this really cool small block you get under the hood 671 blower on top with EFI. And you said that was kind of an adventure to get that whole situation set up. Yeah, it came as a kit, but it took me a whole summer just to get it to idle. So it's uh, <laughs> it, it runs good now, but it, it was. Uh, Quite a headache to get it going. Well, this is a car you get out with a lot. You're from Nebraska, so how long was the haul to get this car out here to Colorado? Mm, it took me uh, about 10 hours, I guess. Uh, it, was, uh, it was about 570 miles, one way. <laughs> well, you know, you got to be really thankful to have all the hard work kind of recognized that you put into this car. Yeah, I really appreciate the fact that Rock Auto uh, sponsored this award, and I really appreciate uh, all the things they do for Chevy Show. Well, thanks for being out here with the car. Thanks for uh, kind of displaying it, letting everybody take a look, and 
have fun rowing the six speed and banging through the gears with this nice blown small block, man. Okay. Yes. The bad part is it's, it's 575 miles back home too, so. One of the great things about having a hot rod is it can make you feel almost ageless when you're inside the car driving it. The guy over here knows exactly what that feeling is like. Barry Bryan, you got a 1950 Chevy Fleetline here with a turbocharged LS motor in it. And when the boost comes in, what does it make you feel like? Well, I'm 73 going on 74, and it makes me feel 16. <laughs> and I need the billfold of a 74-year-old. Uh, my dad bought me one of these as my first car, and he passed away, so I figured I would build a tribute car to him, which I did, and I think he'd be proud of it. I think one of the coolest things about this car is the fact that it does have the modern fuel-injected small block, the LS motor in it. What made you decide to go that way? The younger bucks in my neighborhood convinced me to go LS and electronic fuel injection and the turbo, which I did. Uh, I'm trying to join the 21st century. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the police know me very well around here. <laughs> and one more thing, this is a fully steel car, correct? How much does it weigh? It is fully steel, uh, 3750 with, uh, with this giant belly in it. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chevrolet Series event here at Vandermeer Speedway. Why are you looking at an MG logo right now? Because this 1952 MG DB is powered by the small block Chevy and four speed transmission out of a vintage Corvette. It's one of a ton of the cool cars that's caught our attention this weekend. Let's take a look at another one of our producer's picks. It's a 1951 Ford, but it's a good Ford because it's built Ford tough with Chevy stuff. Diane Cox, this is your truck. It's got a big block Chevy under the hood, and every panel on this thing has been touched. Tell me the story behind this beautiful pickup. Well, it was uh, brought over to us. It was actually a trade when it was all original beat up, and my husband decided he was going to restore it for me, and two years later, it looks like this. It's all metal. There's no Bondo, no nothing in it. He's done all the fabrications. Of course, we have basically the original grill, but it's been chopped. It's a removable top. It's been lowered, it's got the air ride system on it. It's just totally customized inside and out. And of course that great looking dual quad, big block Chevy under the hood. That's gonna be some fun. You got plenty of power under your toe driving this thing. 500 horse going under there, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me about your selections you made on the interior materials and uh, the seats. Well, what I do is it's generally my colors, what I put together. And so I just go through sample books and there's times I go through two or three different times I put the seat together and take it apart because I find other colors that I like, but I picked the paprika and the burgundy for this one. Well, one of the cool things about the truck, it has a very classy element to it. It's not, it's, it's done in almost a coach built style. So it's gonna make you proud every time you walk in the shop and lay your eyes on it. Well, it's one of those things. I open my garage door every morning before I go to work and I look at it and close the garage door and go to work. So it makes you very happy, yes. Back in 1958, the Bandemir family opened Bandemir Speedway out here outside of Denver, Colorado. The great thing is, the Bandemir family still operates this racetrack today. I'm here with John Bandemir III, and this is a very busy racetrack. It is, you know, today uh, obviously having the Chevrolet event is a great event, but uh, it's just one of about 132 events that we do during the course of the season. Well, you say over 100 events a year. Do you ever look at it in the spring and go, oh man, or is it, or is it excitement? You know, it's, the spring is always exciting. You know, when, when you're seasonal, it's kind of nice because you kind of get a chance to, to kind of get your adrenaline back up again, get reloaded. 
But you know, this really truly is family out here. The racers are our family, the spectators are our family, and uh, we spend more time with them than we do in most cases our immediate family. So you do look forward to it, you're excited, but because it's seasonal, you gotta make it happen when the sun's shining. And, and so really from April through October, it is seven days a week, go, go, go. And then uh, of course, there really is no off season per se, because then you're trying to get everything ready for the next season. But, but we're thankful, we're thankful that we have good people involved on our staff and in our family. And obviously the racers and fans are important to us as well. Time now to take a look at our Duracell Copper Top Award winner. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Normally, our DriveDuracell.com cranking with Copper Top Award winners are a little bit bigger than that. Okay, fine, it is bigger than that. In fact, I'm standing here with Gary Morrow, the owner of this awesome hot rod. Give us a lowdown on this thing, man. It's crazy. Well, it's a 1932 Chevy three-window, over 1,000 horsepower. Uh, there's not too many of them left. It's actually a pretty rare car because most of them rotted off in the fields, you know, because they were constructed at one time with wood sure. and stuff. So it's, it's all been brought back. The power plant in this thing, as you mentioned, over 1,000 horsepower. It's a giant rear and horse and 565-inch engine. you got to be honest with you, what's it like to lay into this thing cruising down the highway? You know, it's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> Loud, scary, I don't know. But uh, we drive to the grocery store and stuff, so I don't know. Just kind of get on it when you want to. It has a few things, you know, power steering and power up windows, tilt wheel, no air or anything, but it, it runs good. Well, when you see these things, you think it's, it's a Ford, because everybody has Fords, either they're the Fords or they're fiberglass repo, but there's very few three-window Chevys. Especially all steel like this one is. And when you saw this thing and you said, I gotta have it, what, what, what drew you to it? I don't know, I just thought it was like, a little American graffiti car on steroids. <laughs> so. You do have a Duracell battery in here, and it definitely gets a workout moving that big 565-inch engine over. Yeah, actually, I got to say, Duracell's been really nice and stuff, and uh, I appreciate uh, selecting me for this award and stuff. And we put Duracells in both these units here, and they seem to be working really well, so I'm happy. Well, thank you very much, man. Enjoy the weekend, and congratulations on the award. Okay, thank you. This episode of the Menard Chevy Series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Minty's, dental treats your dog will love. Little history on the ZL1s. The ZL1 motor came in from Can-Am Racing. Chevrolet did incredibly well, Can-Am Racing. They made first 50 ZL1s back in 1969. All went to Fred Gibb Chevrolet. Fred Gibb thought these would be priced pretty cheap. That's why he ordered 50 of the ZL1s. He got sticker shock. What happened was $4,182 just on the motor alone. This brought the ZL1 price up to almost $8,000. In Chevrolet's history, nobody's returned cars to Chevrolet. He returned 43 ZL1s to Chevrolet. So it was just huge. Uh, on the ZL1s, Chevrolet couldn't sell these cars. There has only been four known ZL1s found with original motors. The reason for that was Chevrolet would pull out the ZL1 motor, sell it to the boat, boat racers, drag racers, drop in a 396, a 350, and then sell it. So super rare finding an original ZL1. With being a ZL1 motor, it's even special to within internals of the engine are different, correct? It's a one-off ZL1 motor. It's a big bore kit. They were gonna do a very special project with this car. The project was canceled. The engineer called me on it. He said, would you like a special motor? I said, yes, I have to have this motor. We dynoed this a week ago, 691 in torque. Just a killer motor. We'd love to get this out on the track and see what this car can do, but it's so fresh. I mean, we just don't have the miles. 
we'll eventually get on the track and see what this Z01 will do. Our final award is from Minty's, available at Menards, along with other fine true science products. Well, this week's Minty's Top Dog Award winner stands out for several reasons. It's a gorgeous 1957 Chevrolet, but the story goes way deeper than that. Tell us when your love affair with this car started. It started 43 years ago. It was the first car I bought, uh, 15 years old, paid $1,000 for it from my brother-in-law. I drove it throughout high school, and then it got parked, and I drove it uh, other cars. And then about eight years ago, my brother-in-law decided to get it going again, so we pulled it into his three-car garage and started working on it, and we put all new running gear on it. It's got Jim Meyer racing rear end and front end, tubular and rack and pinion. We did a, a narrow nine inch uh, with four link and then air ride suspension and we really liked it and so we drove it a little bit then to make sure I did like it and then it came back and we took it down to the frame and uh, built it back up, did the body and paint, had it done and then I put an F1 Pro Charger on it just to make it a little more nasty. And it is pretty nasty with 600 horsepower at the flywheel. One of the first things that grabbed our attention about this car is the paint color. So tell us about that because it is a 100% one-off custom color. It is. Um, that's kind of based on the first time when in my junior year in high school I scrounged up $100 and uh, had a paint guy in uh, Fort Collins paint it. Well, it was supposed to be 70 Corvette silver and he uh, put a little green hue to it and I really didn't like it but I accepted it. And over the years, it's kind of grown on me. So when we came back around this time, I debated heavily about what color and went back to the green. And uh, uh, with the silver, we call it silverine. It's got a bunch of metallic in it. When the sun hits it, it really pops. And, uh, and on the inside, it's got a custom rear back seat. And the front seats are Mitsubishi buckets that are custom. And got lucky on the color of the leather. Uh, that came in after the fact that it matched up with the, the green jade. Well, with the air may be thin up here at Vandermeer Speedway, 5,800 feet above sea level, but as we've seen over the last half hour, the love for Chevrolet products is thick. The drag race is going to go on well into the night, but we're done. So we're going to see you next week as we move on to the next location of the Chevrolet Series, chasing this baby across the country.